So there's all this footage of patch 3.12, but your launcher still says 3.11, so what's the deal? Star Citizen's way of releasing patches isn't always clear, so if you want to know when you can access the new stuff and how the whole patch thing works, this one's for you. Star Citizen's patch release schedule is actually quite structured. We get four major patches a year, one every quarter, and these uh, major patches are things like 3.9, 3.10, 3.11. Each one of those will have a couple of minor patches afterwards for major bug fixes, and you know maybe sometimes a ship will miss the release dates that will come in a later, smaller patch. Now while it doesn't always work like this, the general idea is that the different teams that make up CRG's development team, you know, AI, ships, environment, weapons, all that sort of stuff, are split into two broad groups. One group will have been working on 312, whilst the other then works on 313 and so on. It gives groups lengths of six months to work on the next patch, and these are called sprints. So if you hear that in kind of CRG's videos or read it, you'll know what they're talking about. Now you'll figure it out from the intro that the patch doesn't just go live. Each patch is released in stages, and to understand the stages, you kind of need to understand the issue council. Unsurprisingly, for an alpha game, the devs are very much interested in feedback, especially with regards to stuff that just doesn't work. It's, it is kind of a major reason why we have access to the game at this stage. Part of that is being able to test everything en masse. Those of us who find bugs, and let's face it, who hasn't found bugs, um, can head over to the Issue Council and report it. The Issue Council is kind of like a forum reporting system. It gives us the opportunity to record a bug with a screenshot or video to show how and what's gone wrong, the steps of what has happened versus what you were expecting to happen, and it becomes a public repository of knowledge. So when you go onto the Issue Council, take a couple of seconds to see if your bug is already reported, you can jump onto that bug, add your own information, and it kind of bumps it up CRG's priority list. CRG monitor not only what bugs are being reported, but also which accounts are doing the reporting. They'll take a particular interest in players who report bugs regularly, um, being very helpful about it, including as much detail as they can, for example, or maybe trying to do the same thing in a different way to see if that replicates the bugs, uploading loads of evidence like pictures, video, all that sort of stuff, those sorts of players will catch CIG's eye. And those sorts of players may well find themselves being invited to the Evo Carti test flight. The Evo Carti test flight are a specific group of players who are all under a non-disclosure agreement with CIG. Every patch they're given a specific focus for the release uh, with the expectation that they'll spend a lot of time testing those areas and reporting back. It might sound like a lot of fun to be one of the first players to get your hands on it, but it actually is a lot of work. And just think, if the versions we get our hands on are buggy, imagine what these guys and girls go through. I'm not Eva Carty, so I'm not aware of the specific details of that NDA, but it is clear that if you just want early access to a patch in order to play it, this might not be the best option for you. So let's talk about a few of the better ones. Once the Evo Carti phase of the patch has been done, it will be released to Wave 1 PTU or Public Test Universe. Instructions on how to do that are towards the end of the video, so you can find that linked in the chapters below. But the idea is that you download an early version of the new client and apply through your account page to have your account copied into the PTU. Um, this can take a while, so they tend to email you when it's done. Now, you can play both versions. You can play PTU and you can play live. So it's not like you lose your live version. And in the PTU, you tend to have a couple of million credits, so there's no real barriers for you to go out and test whatever's just been introduced. The players eligible for Wave 1 are, surprise, surprise, those who are financially invested. So basically, those who have an active current subscription, or those who have backed to concierge status, basically spending $1,000 or above on the game. 
you know, before the comments fills up with angry rage about paywalls and stuff, A, it's not a paywall because you're going to get access to the stuff anyway. Um, but B, it does make sense when you think about it. Some people buy the game just to play it, and that's great. They don't want to get involved in bug testing. Who wants to fall through the planet 27 times on purpose when it's annoying enough to do it by accident? But there are those who are going to want to be involved, and often those are the people who have a subscription so they can get early hands on a ship and try it and everything else. And the people who have over a thousand pounds, some much, much more, have a vested interest in this stuff. It is a little bit of a reward, but it's also on the assumption that if you've got that much money riding on this game, you're going to be pretty invested in seeing it go right. Just bear in mind that even at this stage, the game can be pretty damn buggy. I really wanted to push out a mining and refining video this evening, but I just wasn't able to do it. There seemed to be some problems with the refining UI, mining's doing weird stuff. So I'm going to wait until everything's a little bit more stable and get you guys a guide you can count on. Of course, it's not just those who are concierge and subscribers who want to see the game succeed. So after spending some time in Wave 1 PTU, it will then go to wider PTU. And that's basically open to everyone with a game package. After a little while in wider PTU, once CIG are ready, it then goes live. PTU is no more. That patch number is now the patch and the old one's dead. That can be quite quick. For example, 312, we're expecting that to go live just before Christmas. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer. A lot of it actually just depends on the state of the patch and how quickly they can get it to a point where they're happy for it to become the live build. Now, in order to check whether or not you're even able to download it, go to your account page. On the left, you're gonna see this button, Public Test Universe. If that's grayed out, you don't have access. If it's not, click on it, and then in the center, you'll see copy your account to PTU. It can take a little while, so CIG will email you once it's done. Once you've got that email, go to your launcher, and where it says live on the left-hand side, you can go to the PTU build. Now, obviously, I've already installed mine, but basically, it will be like you you need to download the game. It will go install. Uh, this one's quite a sizable one. I think it's about 60 gigs. But once you're downloaded, just make sure you're on your PTU and you're good to go. Just remember, everything that they say to you about buggy builds in SC goes double for the PTU. Not just the new stuff, it can break old stuff that you were relying on working and you haven't had a problem with up until now. It can be a pain in the backside, so if stuff like that makes you rage, probably a good idea to leave PTU alone or just pop in and have a look now speaking of triggered um the patch numbers triggers a lot of people's ocd it's like why didn't you just go from three nine to four zero why have we got 312 and why did why did drinkers talk about 313 oh my god it's it's so stupid and yeah i kind of get you it annoys me too but here's the reason so we're in patch 3.x right it's only go to 4.x when a major change comes in um, it denotes a you know a significant shift in the game's capability and technology. For 4.x to come in, we're going to need server meshing. It's a massive, massive upgrade to everything. It's basically, rather than just running on these closed servers of 50 people, it's going to enable them to have so much more stuff, so many more people in the game. It's still a long way off yet, so I'm afraid you're just going to have to deal with that really daft numbering. And just make sure when PTU's all done and it's now the live build and everything's great, <laughs> just make sure you delete the old PTU build if it's not gone already. Get it out of there. It's a whole build by itself. It's a lot of hard drive space that you can just have back. I am really looking forward to bringing you guys some 312 content once everything's stabilized a bit. So make sure you smack that like button if you're excited as well. I'm really looking forward to doing some refining, the new mining HUD, gas cloud tech, and some of the hidden surprises they've put in uh, to 3.12 as well. So make sure you check back. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I'll see you soon.